Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. I'm starting to feel a little obsessive about this. I've got two more layers on these. I'm doing two chunks at a time now. I've got empty chunks over here that I'm not doing anything with. Um, but I'm still thinking about it. So I want to get these two done squared away. Make sure I have the right pick here. Yeah. So um, come up with a, a process that feels a little less um, tedious. I can take out these Oh, gravel. Uh, yeah, so this is... Ah, so that's the layer above. Okay. <sighs> and this is this feels like biting time a little bit. I added a few more things here and there, which I'll kind of do a little tour. This dirt. Um, so this is kind of just killing time. This project has been mostly just killing time. Uh, there is a cave above or back behind this wall, but it's below. It's a couple levels down. Uh, I found that the, the cave extends. Let's see if I can see the entrance over here. The cave extends. It's down on that layer there. Um, back another. Looks like I think I can go one more chunk this direction if I wanted to. I'm at the limit of this beacon though, so it becomes a little bit of a uh, a little bit more tedious to go too much further. Uh, if I come back here and wait long enough, the uh, beacon effect will run out. So it kind of goes up to around here. So going just a few more blocks past the beacon isn't that big of a deal because I can arrange things such that I don't have to get out of the beacon effect area too much. But uh, if, if I go another chunk that way, it becomes, it'll become significantly more challenging without me doing something like moving the beacon, which I'd prefer not to do just yet. So we'll see. I'm gonna take out these and then come down here. And I can come and take out these, which are five by five by five chunks. So it's, you know, um, relatively small amount of stuff. So I'm going to go empty my pockets now so that I can show you what I've got going on down there. Let's uh, actually let's is the cave down here. Is this the cave? This is uh, I think that is the cave. So yeah, so this cave goes down here. And there, I found it because there was a zombie making moaning noises up here. He had picked up something. He picked up a bone or something from a fellow mob that had died. And this is the dividing line. So here, War Motion. Here, Mushroom Island. And if we do this, this is the edge of the chunk. So I think... Now, if I go over this way, I may run into more warm motion biome. But I think there's there's more caves over over here that I haven't gotten to, found, explored, whatever. So this might be a good stopping point. I don't have a ton of uh, plans for this area yet. So I kind of added... I mean, I have this, this sort of vertical chunk here is all fungus stuff so I've got mushrooms I have crimson nylium and warped nylium below it and 
<clears throat> I got my tree chunk over there. I'm thinking now, oh, and then I've got cactus, sugarcane and cactus in this one, and bamboo below that. So these are kind of things that grow tall, and then these are trees. Uh, so I might like build up farm stuff here, or I might do it over in this one here to keep things a little bit more central. A whole empty chunk here. And I might do farms. I might grow like wheat and carrots and potatoes and stuff like that. But if we go over here and go down, um, yeah, so I've got down here, this is the sea turtles and the, and the sea grass. Then here, oh darn. I was hoping there would be some squid, glow squid in there. So this is my glow squid farm. Um, it's not super productive, but I do get some. So if I come over here and what I found was by coming over this way, and it seems to be highly variable and random, but if I come over here and look here, I should be able to see, if I go down another layer, So yeah, seagrass, storage, seagrass, turtles, and glow squid. And if I come over here, and it does seem to depend somewhat on time of day. It seems to be important. Um, also, how many people are on? I'm alone right now. But I'll get pack spawns of, of glow squid in there, and then I can go in and kill them. I was hoping, I thought I was far enough away here that stuff would spawn in the meantime before I got over there. But, oh, look at that. Look, see? Some glow squid. Let's go kill them. So, I had, um, tried doing glow squid farming before and just put some water in a cave underground and I figured that was those were the conditions um, it's not it needs to be completely dark like the it needs to be light level zero on the blocks so I'm using this lovely tinted glass which is great stuff and put a little tiny entrance over here so down right here uh, block lies four. So basically these few blocks in the corner, they will not spawn in, but the rest of it, they can. And with a looting sword, pick up a fair amount. Ask again, squid hit, glow squid ends. Um, and because it is so dark, it's helpful to turn on uh, hit boxes so you can see where they are. But yeah, so that that's good. So now I actually have a supply of glow squid ink, glow ink sacks, so that I can use them on signs and such, which is great because otherwise it was just kind of coming across them out in the real world. So that's what's going on here. I've been farming up some wood making chests so that I can expand the storage area because I want to I want to sort this stuff out and make like a you know chest for diamonds chest for chest for lapis chest for gold and so on and get this stuff so it's not so crammed tight in here um, and then and I'm thinking Deep slate. This I've got so much. This is all cobbled deep slate here. All of these cobbled deep slate. This is all silk touched slate deep slate, and then this is kind of deep slate stuff made from deep slate. So that's not uh, super helpful. Uh, this is all stone. Less less of it, but that's all smooth stone, and this is all cobblestone. That will fill up over time. And then these are, this is gravel and tough, and granite, andesite and diorite. So I've got andesite here, so I assume 
No, I don't. Oh, here's some andesite. So yeah, I just kind of manually go and sort this all out. When my inventory fills up. Oh, about to fill up this one and move on down to here. Granite, granite. Uh, and then dirt goes up here. So I've got a fair amount of dirt. I've got some uh, gravel from which I can make more dirt if I need. And then stone. And then I get ores. And so the smooth stone is right here. Blup. <clears throat> and then I go silk touch the uh, ores just to keep it from proliferating too much because otherwise you get the, the regulars, the regular ores, and then you get deep slate ores, and it just becomes, it becomes a bit of a mess. And I've been blocking them up into these blocks of raw, so blocks of raw iron, rather than smelting it all down because I have plenty of iron from the iron farm. And one of the things I want to do over here is build another iron farm here. Um, I think that would be kind of a neat thing to do. Not sure where to put it, but put it kind of central here so that I have villagers over there that I can bring over. Like maybe empty out this chunk and build the iron farm here. And then um, build it up a little bit, make it so that the killing chamber I can actually see here and that way I don't have to lift up all the stuff. Uh, I can actually build, like build storage like this Put the killing chamber just above it and then put the actual farm above that. I think that should work. So, didn't plan on doing a whole lot today. I've got stuff, I've got a number of things I'm working on today, just personal stuff, trying to get things uh, sorted out. I, uh, I'm trying to purchase a car. So I need to get that sorted out. So I've got like phone calls into different places and I have to return my current car as a lease vehicle and I want to purchase the lease and <clears throat> need to figure out the procedure on that because I've never done that before. And um, so figuring out timing, it's all coming up soon. So things are a little stressful. So I'm talking with the finance company and the dealership and the car has some issues that need to get resolved before I turn it in or, or buy it one way or the other. Um, so there's all that. So I wasn't planning on doing too terribly much today in here, but I wanted to come in real quick, uh, mainly because I woke up this morning to some news that was not, uh, not great. I uh, found out that Max Maven passed away. Uh, Max Maven is kind of a, if you don't know who he is, stop it, please. Um, <clears throat> he's kind of a giant in the magic world. One of the more prolific magic creators of all time, certainly kind of a preeminent mentalist. Um, which is kind of a distinction without meaning, in my opinion, but... Um, but he was kind of a, it was kind of a big, big deal and, uh, spent, came out to the magic castle in the early 1980s and has been a big part of the magic castle community ever since. Um, so, and we knew that he was, he was having health difficulties, brain cancer and had been through a couple rounds of trying to cure that or treat it and the last round I did a round that seemed to be successful seemed to be working um, but then it came back and I think they knew at that point that it was just a matter of time so we knew he was going to die um, just still kind of sucks to have it happen suddenly just to wake up in the morning and have my social media feeds filled with people who knew him and um, 
and I knew him a little bit. It wasn't super close, but we did meet. Oops. Come on. Um, <clears throat> we have met, and uh, he was definitely, definitely one of the uh, the greats. Um, so it was just kind of sad to hear that it's gone and that I had never had not really had the opportunity to get to know him better. So, so it sucks, but it sucks more for my friends who did spend time with him. Uh, I got to see pictures that people posted like, oh, this is a picture I took Max two days ago. And he did seem to be a much better health and spirits recently and fortunately we got the opportunity we be in the uh, academy of magic arts the magic castle got the opportunity to sort of celebrate him very publicly um oops. at the uh, the awards banquet the one same one that i talked about already where i i received an award uh, Max received sort of the uh, Master Fellowship Award, which is kind of the highest honor that the Magic Castle hands out. So, and that was a big emotional thing. He gave a really beautiful acceptance speech that um, I don't think has been made available publicly, which is too bad. But it was it was a really great speech and. Hopefully everyone gets a chance to see it at some point because it was really good. And he talked about the Magic Castle specifically, um, how he considered the Magic Castle. He realized the Magic Castle was kind of like Soil and Green, the sci-fi movie, because he realized that it was, it was people. It was people that made the Magic Castle what it was. So... Uh, made it such a special place, which is a great way of summarizing the reason we were all there. But anyway, so okay, so I got more gravel there. That was good, and a hole. And if I dig out any more that way, let's go take a peek. Shouldn't normally do this, but. Turn on the grid. Whoops. Turn on the grid. Spectator mode. And pull up the F3 screen. So this is the little thing I just dug out here. Not much else out here. But I'm in mushroom fields all the way out here. That's good. Oh, or am I? Oh, spy I hear you. Oh, look. I've got more mobs in the other cave right here. Which is this in Mushroom Fields, but the mobs obviously spawned up over here where we are in warm ocean. Okay. So this is another cave here. Mushroom Fields all the way back. So yeah, I think I can get one more layer, one more chunk back, and I might just decide to do that. Yeah. And there's other stuff here. There is this uh, band of mine shaft, and look what I have here. I shouldn't know about this, but this is all mushroom fields, and there's a spider spawner. So I think the center point of this mine shaft, I haven't explored it too much, but is clearly not in the, the mushroom fields biome. The center point is where it decides whether it can do it, and it's... It's in here, so there's another spider spawner there. Um, so this is obviously kind of cheaty, but the central room of this thing must not be in the mushroom fields biome, but it's got to be under here under the warm ocean. So it decided just to generate, and it generated some of it into the mushroom fields, which is kind of awesome. That means there's an opportunity to get a string farm going inside the mushroom fields 
where uh, otherwise no hostile mobs could spawn. So that's kind of cool. So I'm I'm looking forward to digging out a little bit more here, getting to that spider spawner and incorporating it into, and it's right in this next chunk. So I will come across it and we'll have to be careful not to destroy the spawner, um, but to sort of take care of it and figure out how to how to deal with it. But there's there's some good adventure in uh, caves back here. So anyway, a little sneak peek of what might have planned. Coming up. So anyway, um, yeah, so I've been going a little longer than I would, that I should have probably. Um, so that's just a quick little update. I've got a few more videos going to in the can that I need to edit together. So this will just kind of extend out the year, the time before I get into doing more. Oh, hello, Mr. Glow Squid. Please give me your ink sack. There we are. Hello. Very nice. So yeah, there we go. All right. Well, I think that will be it for now. Um, Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's been Minecraft Land Party. And I will see you next time. All right. Bye.